Hello. Hi. Ladies. Where's my actors? For God's sakes, no one just wants to see a bald writer standing at it, sitting at a table. Give me some writers. Give me some actors. Can you just give us your name? I'm Adam Simon, the co-creator and the head writer on sale. I'm Elise Eberly, and I play Marcy Lewis. I'm uh, Jelly. <laughs> Say that again. Okay, I'm Ido Goldberg, and I play Isaac Walton. Inside. Also known as. Where do you find the stamina <laughs> to play like, even one of the things that they ask you to do on this show? It I don't seems know. like it would be exhausting. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> There's uh, beat up, you know, bruises and scrapes, and it's it's hard. But it's I love um, being physical with the, a character because you it's sort of like you get to really know the character even more because you're so fluid with their movements and you yeah. You, that's what I loved about that opportunity to play when I was like in the market scene and I played this like thing where you where I was in control by Mercy was I mean Mary was in control of me and she was putting I was standing up and there was that really weird movement and it's sort of like dance in a way so mm. and I have a dance background so I sort of use that but I just I love it I love like really just pushing it and they give me these opportunities that are so like bizarre and amazing and I love it I I'm obsessed with it. I love taking risks. Yeah, so. Sorry about burning you. Uh, that was hard. That was a hard one. Took a long yeah. recovery, but she did great. Yeah. And I gotta say, yeah. I'll never forget Elise's audition for that part. We had just seen a professional contortionist kind of get on the ground and do this stuff. And we were like, oh, that's interesting. And it was a smaller part at the time. We thought, maybe we should just have a contortionist do it. And then this girl walks in. And it just, she did more than the contortionist did, but also with all this soul, you know, and all this emotion coming out, we're like, that's it. And then, as we've been saying before, which is equally true, actually, with uh, Ido's incredible performance as Isaac, these were both characters that we didn't know at the time, and I, when I wrote the pilot, absolutely did not know or have any intention that these characters would still be around three years later. He died at the end of the pilot, which is, yeah, but we all were like, he can't die. We love this guy. We love this character now because of what we brought to it. And equally, Mercy suddenly became the most interesting character in so many ways. I mean, they're all interesting. Yeah, when suddenly, we, when it was we, like, what? When we filmed the pilot, Elise, first of all, Elise came in with a huge, huge head. Yeah. Like huge, red, long, red. And then she came back one day and just had this head. Yeah, just, she let us shave her head and cut she it had, out. She had, her nails were just filled with <laughs> filth. She had bruises everywhere. And I'm like, hi guys! <laughs> and I, I, I was sat there thinking, wow, I, I need to bring it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a challenge. So by the time you come three years later into season three, to see that girl who was snarling around the village in a dog mask, now has become a, a, a really a woman of her own power. If she started the show possessed, in, in season three she is self-possessed for the Ooh. first time. Nice. Okay. And that brings a lot of consequences for good and for bad. And it's really interesting. And similarly, the guy who starts the season, the, the original the show, getting branded, you know, and suffering the consequences, this outcast, this, this, this village idiot, Isaac the Fornicator, has become the conscience of Salem and, and, all the, and all the people that were there kind of during and and and, uh, and, uh, and, and shouting and mocking him while he was being branded are the people that you know he has the ear in this season it was um, amazing and, and to see that to see them come to him and then to see the choices he has to make uh, dealing with the power and having that power for the first time is something that's just so wild for him uh, and I was saying before just the fact that Isaac has never been able to answer back to people and never been able to really express how he feels he's always swallowing his emotions and holding uh, back yeah, yeah holding back um, so this season, you looked anybody in the eye for two years yeah it was always like this right yeah. you know and covered your covered your scar it's been I, I'm really um, I'm, I'm scared <laughs> and looking forward to seeing it because it's a very it's different great. It's a very different side of it. It's great. It's actually, if I can, it's a strange concept to say it. It's truly Capra-esque, if we're not too far removed from Frank Capra, to still remember what that means, to see him become, and in fact, we talked a lot about movies like Meet John Doe and some of the great Frank Capra movies, 
that dealt with the, the shadow and the light of populism and about somebody who comes up and starts to become a symbol for people. It was weird this season, there's something that was weirdest to me, it was all these things that we wrote more than a year ago. Uh, I mean, literally the season begins with a very strange and rather desperate refugee crisis when there was no refugee crisis. We didn't go read the papers, hey, let's do a refugee crisis. There was no refugee crisis. That, that was the thing that started the story. And then, not to say we caused it, a little black magic there, but and then to start to look at again the light and dark sides of Islam and all the things, and it really went back to this idea we'd always had, though, that Brandon and I really shared that this was a show about the birth of the American devil, meaning that Salem has always stood for the dark side of America. That America is a place of great hope and great danger, you know, with great ideals that often turn into their opposite. A, a country dedicated to freedom and founded on slavery. I mean, all this self contradiction, the show is always always been a fantasy about that and I think this season more than ever yeah, I mean, really, uh, the, first, the first thing you hear this season. That's right. The first thing you hear is, history will say, the devil was born in Salem. And in some ways, it's been true for all of us in America, that yeah. the devil was born in Salem, right? It feels like it's not a person's DNA to give up. Hmm. Well, no, that's, oh, no, that's exactly. And I think that's so true. Um, sort of seems like she's she cannot die. I mean, she is burned to almost, you would think that she would die at that time when she gets burned alive and then she somehow survives. She is so persistent and she is so strong-willed that she, it's such an inspiration to like play some something like this, you know, it's very admirable because she is so like perseverant, she is so strong and I just, it's it's really, really fun to play something like and I got, that. I love that, yeah, I have to just add on to that, that they're probably my favorite moments in many ways this season and I don't want to give too much away about it. Because I haven't seen it either, so When she has come through so much and it looks like maybe she's been crushed again and oh, right, the, right, you know right, and, yeah. and it's like and I remember writing a thing going and she feels like maybe Almost I don't have it much. maybe I can't do it one more time I don't know if I can do it one more time and it's I really unexpected because yeah. because the last thing I think anybody would expect in relation to this character is what up. lifts her back up yeah she and, never it, gives up. and something she would never expect which is love yeah comes so out this of that is the first and it's, really the, it's the most bizarre strange it's the strangest love story I've ever heard <laughs> I think so it's definitely way up there yeah way up there. <laughs> Only Salem would make a, a relationship, create a relationship like that one. Are you ready? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I was, it's so funny because um, when, I think it was two months bef prior, no, it was two months before um, auditioning for this role, I told my managers, I was like, I want to shave my hair and all, like, Sinead O'Connor, and I want to be in a period piece. Yeah, careful and what you wish for. Well, no, it's crazy, because I I had these long locks what that I was ready to just like, happening? it's bizarre. I, I wanted to do those too, but it wasn't like, they weren't, I was not dreaming of like them being in the same situation. And they were! And then I got to, to have a shaved head and it was awesome. It was amazing. So, yeah. Thanks guys. Thank you. It's all right. Thank you. Have a good day, you guys. Thank you guys.